All right, everything you ever wanted to know about drill bits, but were afraid to ask. No, that's all. It's the same sheet. Drills and safety wire. Actually, I changed the titles. Drills and safety now. So, add in a few extra items. But we'll Drills and stuff. Drills and whatnot. <coughs> so we'll start off with this. Yes, they you had me make extra. Sorry. The whole point was to get rid of it. All right. If there is actual reading, there it is. It's also in Canvas. And I gave you a printout because it's very difficult to draw a drill bit. So I thought that could be helpful. Mm -hmm. So you have the handout. Thank you, sir. Yeah, mentioned stuff. All right. And your job is going to be to fill out all that stuff, which we'll get to. All right. All right. <clears throat> drill bits. And we decided I'm okay just with my mm -hmm. right. Let's see if too fat. Try this one. Drill bits. Drill bits. All right, we're gonna start with drill bits. No more butteries. Drill bits. What is this your decision? Drill bits. All right. Nomenclature. What things are called? Which you've been using a drill bit for the last four weeks. Mm -hmm. You didn't just find without any of this information. So why are we talking about it now? Because you had nothing you had nothing else to fill the space. Filler. I had I man, I needed filler, you know me. <laughs> no, because it's in the book and you need to know it when you're test doing the FA, it'd be very embarrassing if you didn't. Plus you do a lot of drilling in aviation. A lot. No matter what you're working on. I worked on engines a lot. I did more drilling when I worked on engines than I think I did when I didn't work in engines. So there is a lot of drilling that happens. Um, you, you know what you're doing. If you don't, it makes a mess of things. And when you do know what you're doing, it makes things a lot easier. So a little bit of this is a little more in depth than you probably have to go, but eh, you never know what happens there. So, all right, so we have the body, the body of the, the drill, and that is. Never mind. Right there. <coughs> the body. That is this part. From here to here. That's the drilly part. With all the lines and curves and whatnot. I'm sorry, I didn't even get quite so technical on you already. Uh, the portion of the drill extending from the shank to the outer corners of the cutting lip. So the body, that's from the shank to cutting lips. So using my BADB, big ass drill bit, so from this part right here, all the way to the top. So it's everything but that. So that part would be shank. That's a shit. <laughs> well, the same thing. Right. He, he got put in jail because he had one. Oh, he got put in jail for a much different. You get a shanker sword if you're not careful. <laughs> All right, that's the part of the drill by which is held and driven. Part of the drill. Um, by which. Number three, the cutting diameter. This is kind of a, a difficult one here. <clears throat> technically speaking, I'll tell you what it's technically. It is the diameter over the margins. The diameter over the margin. the drill measured at the point. So you want to know 
what size hole this is going to drill, how would you find out? We well, just read it right there. It says one and a quarter. <coughs> but technically speaking, you would measure it out here at the widest part, which would be the margin, which I don't know anybody's ever done that. I mean, normally we just measure it back here where it's flat. And this has got a taper shank to it, but most drill bits like the ones you guys have been using have a straight shank on it. And so you just measure it back here on the straight shank, and that's basically what it's going to give you. Because if you took a look at this, you'd see that this diameter right here, where it's not machined away, is in fact the uh, diameter, and then it's, it's relieved or cut away in this section right here, which is called the um, land. So cutting diameter, so that's how we know. So if I asked you, because that was confusing, how would you find out the cutting diameter of a drill? Your answer would be? Measure it at the widest point at the tip. Yeah. So the cutting tip. Yeah, so that would be a nice textbook answer. What would you do in reality? Measure what does it say on the, on the drill? Well, where would you measure it? You couldn't tell. Because a lot of times you can't tell. Back of the drill. Back of the drill. Yeah, but you can't measure it on this shank because it's tapered. Tapered. You don't do it there, but otherwise you would be able to do it on the shank. So flutes. Um, let me see here. Mm -hmm. got better pictures. So we got the shank right there. So this would be a straight shank, so you could measure it right there. That would be not a problem at all. Uh, now we're talking about the flutes. That is the part right here that is cut away. So the margin, that's this little piece that sticks up right here. The land is the part that's relieved right here. So if, you, if you're looking at the drill, I'm trying to get the biggest one I could find, and you look at it, you will notice that it's, there's a raised lip right there. That's the margin. And then next to it, you have the land that's relieved down in. And if you look at it here, you can see where it's kind of ground down in. So the land is narrower than where the margin is. Well, there, there's a reason for that. The margin is technically the actual diameter of the drill bit. The land is what's been cut away, leaving just the margin. Well, why didn't they just do the whole thing? Why did they relieve it? You could have just had all margin and no land, right? Except then you have all of this surface right here, that's what, about three quarters of an inch, rubbing inside the hole. And that's going to make things very, very hot. And of course, the metal is hot, then it expands, and then you're going to get a different size hole, and then it's not what you want. So it goes through, it cuts, and then the only thing left is the margin, and the margin is what stabilizes it in the hole, and then the land has been all relieved away so that you don't have that rubbing and creating heat. <coughs> and we we're about to talk about the flute right there, but I think we can go back over to here. The cutting diameter, largest diameter measured across the top of the lands behind the point. That's what I just said, right? Right there. So there's the land right there. You see the land? And you technically measure it from there to there. And the reason why I'd say technically that is because some drills, as it's going to say right there, has a back taper. I'm not aware of too many that do, but back taper, where it actually gets smaller and smaller. Now, if that were true, then this diameter here, or the diameter of the shank, or the straight shank, would be completely different than the diameter here. And every time you ground the drill bit, made it smaller and smaller, it'd get, actually get narrow and narrow. So I don't know, not a lot of drill bits do that. I think they're all pretty straight. <clears throat> but if you did have a back taper, it would provide clearance behind it and that would prevent rubbing. All right, so cutting down. We got that. Uh, flutes. <clears throat> Lock up flute. These are the flutes right here. That's good. So flutes. <coughs> helical, helical, which means spiral. Helical or straight grooves cut or formed <clears throat> in the body of the drill. Uh, 
All right, why do you have flutes? Couple very good reasons. Well, let's see if you can guess the number one reason why there's a flutes. Not the number one reason. Oh, cutting edge. It's the side. It's the guy have a cutting edge in the tip on the tip. If you didn't have flutes, you'd have a round stock. You'd have round stock, and there'd be nothing to cut. Round stock with the pointy. So the flutes, once you cut away that material, it gives the cutting lips, which is kind of duh. So, all right. So, um, almost goes without. So it provides the cutting lips. All right, I heard this. I think Nick said it. What'd you say, Nick? To remove the material. No. All right, permit removal of chips. Very important. What else we got? Wow. Uh, surface area. Um, cooling. Allows cutting fluid. to reach cutting lips. So in other words, you're drilling away and you want to add some fluid. And you put it in there. Well, <laughs> chips are going that way, but hopefully not enough. So fill it up. So the fluid will then run through the flutes down into the cutting lips. Well, it's down in there. And let's see. Oh, well, this isn't really uh, what it's there for, but it's good to know that flute, flute length is the maximum <coughs> depth of drilling. So in other words, if I had to drill, especially if this is a straight shank, and if I had to drill a hole that's that deep, once I get to this point, and I keep going, what happens? Fogging it up. Yeah, the chips have nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. So, been there, done that. You just got to keep bringing it back out. Bring it back out. Drill a bit, bring it back out. <laughs> put it all out, then put it back in. You just got to take it out, clean it. I wasn't working on an airplane. I was just drilling a hole in the house. All right, so we got the flutes. What can you say about the flutes here? Flutes, length of the flute measured from the drill point to the end of the <coughs> flute run out. Let's give some fancy words here. Uh, flute length determines the maximum depth of drilling. That's what I just said. So there's your flutes. And then there's, let's see, um, there's more about the flutes here. I guess I come back around to it. All right, so the land. We'll talk about the land. That is the land right there. The part that has been relieved, if you will. Relieved means it's been cut away, taken out. So if you look right here, even in here you can see this right here would be land, the same diameter as the land, right, all of this right here. And right there you can see where it starts to grind away and gets smaller right there, leaving a margin right there. Follow? Mm -hmm. All right. So flutes, we got the land. Uh, part of the drill body between the flutes. Well, why didn't they just get rid of all of that and just leave just the margin then? Just make the flute much bigger. Well, you said that earlier. It's it's. Uh... It's for Maybe it's to so allow because it would get hot in the, in the. Well, no, just take away all of it. See, they cut away some of it. They made a land. Why not get rid of all of it? And just leave a margin. Because it's super weak. Super weak. Oh. It is super weak. So it gives strength, which is a point in here, which I don't think I have to write. Gives torsional strength. Oh, I can make that, but. That assumes that you didn't take it away. So. <coughs> torsional. All right, the land. Now I got the heel, but there is no toe, which is mm -hmm. unfortunate. 
heel. That is the trailing edge of the land. I don't even know if I like that per se. Let me see if I have a picture of it. Okay, the land, park change your body, friends drill torsional strength, reducing the land width increases chip space but reduces strength. So in other words, if you make this smaller, um, it will increase chip space, means it made the flute bigger, but reduce strength because it took away the material. All right, grab the heel. Uh, I don't, but I'm going to say this is the heel right here. So this is where things start to diverge pretty rapidly between some of your books, and some of them are just, they're just wrong. So we're going to make it not wrong. So the heel right here is the cutting lip. Can you see that right there, cutting lip? Mm -hmm. All right, and so this would be the heel back in here. But right here, uh, let me see, heel. Um, next thing we're going to talk about, so this is the heel right here. Right in there, that's the heel, that's the heel. Here's the cutting edge right there, cutting edge. Here's the cutting edge right there. So cutting edge, cutting edge. But we're gonna talk about the web right now. So the web is the thickness measured between the flutes. And so what is sticking out right there is technically the tip of the web. So look right there, so that becomes the tip of the web. But it's gonna have a name, chisel point chisel edge. We're going to talk about that in a second, but that's the web. So inside of here, I've obviously my fingers aren't touching. There's material between the two flutes and the material in there creates what's called the web. And if you look on there in the yellow right there, that's what you're right there, the web, and it gets bigger as you go. So you can literally put your finger right here. And if you kind of feel it, your fingers start to spread out as you go down the flutes because the web gets thicker and thicker and thicker as you get down here. So it's thicker here, gives it uh, strength so it doesn't flex too much. It doesn't flex at all. Um, so the web gets thicker as you go. So if the web gets thicker as the drill bit gets shorter and shorter, what happens if I stick this in a drill doctor, which is a thing that sharpens drill, I keep sharpening it, and eventually my drill bit's only about that. That, that long. What happens? It just it's it's really really yeah, it starts to get really wide in there, and then it's really hard to get started. Just need a couple more pilot holes. Pilot holes. Works every time. Uh, let's see. Heel the web. web. That is the thickness measured across the flutes. Um, what did I say? Web thickness increases. Toward the shank. All right, so thick web is rigid drill. Um, and more pressure. More pressure required. If we have a thin web, what is that going to be? More flexible drill. Yep. And less pressure. What do you mean by rigid drill and more flexible drill? I will tell you. Okay. Don't go like that. Yeah, rubber drills and like, you know, hard and stainless drills. All right. All right, obviously I've got a gigantic ass drill bit here, and so it wouldn't matter if this had the world's smallest web in there that was only a, you know, an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth or a thirty second. You're not going to flex this drill bit. <coughs> but we'll start with just, I've got a big one so we can all kind of at least partially see it. So a thick web is going to make it so it doesn't flex. Now, you think, well, it's not going to flex, but I use a lot of times, uh, Number three drill bits that are about that long. What? Yeah, and you, I use them a lot, and they're fantastic for when you can't reach, you can't get your drill into some place. Number one, and number two, when you got a bend, 
I'll just literally bend the drill bit. Not, not bend it and start drilling, because then I'll just do that. But, but I'll take it and kind of grab it. And you want one that, does, that has a very long shank and not too much of flute on it. And I'll actually can bend it. Um, you can bend it a, a pretty fair amount. And I'll bend it into what I need to and start drilling. Yeah, my hand gets a little hot doing it. But you can actually bend it and do it. So that is a very thin web, and I want a thin web, and it won't take a lot of pressure to drill. Why? Because that chisel edge is very small. It's pointy, right? And it doesn't break? Like, once you bend it? No, I can bend it far enough. From, like, eight over. drill bits to a sheet metal, man. Um, <laughs> okay, it's like a perfect example. Like, I think the last time I did do this, I was putting in, like, a radio or something, and so you have an opening in your, um, in your instrument panel. Right, and, and so the opening's that wide. You need to drill the hole right there. Well, how are you going to get it without? If you have a 90 degree drill adapter, it's real easy. You just stick it in there and just do it. But how are you going to get a drill in that space? You won't. You'll have it out here and kind of snake the drill bit in a little bit. Follow? Mm -hmm. All right. So it's easy to do. Um, the, the snakes are usually pretty awkward to use too. So it's they can be. Yeah. So it's just it's just an example. So. Um, the thicker the web, the less flexing you're going to get out of a drill bit. The bigger the drill bit, the less flexing you're going to get anyway. But let's talk about 30s and 40s and you know drill bits that are um, longer but a quarter inch maybe. You can get a lot of flexing out of them. You really can. I mean, try it in a drill press and start moving your, your work. You'll get start flexing. Uh, so if you have a thick web, it won't flex as much. But you got to press harder because? You have a wider chisel. And less cutting edge to it. Yeah, and then less cutting lips. And then if you have a very thin web, it's going to be very flexible. flexible, but it doesn't take as much pressure because it comes to more of a point instead of a chisel edge. All right, chisel edge, since we're talking so much about it. Uh, let's see. Technically, it's the edge at the end of the web that connects the cutting lips. The edge at the end of the Cutting webs. <coughs> Is that a good thickness for that pen, or should I go a little thicker? You guys are just full of ideas. <laughs> As the drill gets shorter from sharpening, the trizzle point will get wider. 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 <coughs> Which one? This one or the one I had before? Yeah, the one before was fine. We'll do it in rainbow colors. <laughs> that would just be like obnoxious as hell. <laughs> <laughs> that keeps everyone speaking to Joey. Keeps everyone, <laughs> keeps everyone pissed off is what that does. Two S off. Chisel point gets what? Wider. 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 All right, so there's your chisel point. Talk about that. What's this circle right there? The heel. 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 What's the dotted line? Cutting edge. Cutting edge. Formed by? The flutes. The flutes. Uh, just going to change slides. I didn't know how to draw that. All right, chisel edge, cutting lips. All right. Helix angle. Angle formed between a line drawn parallel to the axis of the drill and the edge of the land. So helix angle, they're calling this a high angle. They're calling this one a regular, and this one a slow helix angle. So helix angle. <coughs> Chisel edge, helix angle. <coughs> Ooh. 
All right, so high angle is less strength. And a low angle is stronger. Sir, can we go back to that slide with the definition? Of yes, we can. Thank you. So a high angle, this one here, where it's closer to straight up and down or getting closer to 90 degrees to the um, axis, would be less strength. Less strong, but it cuts better? I know, every time I get to this point, I'm like, I don't really have a good example of who, why, what. Um, slow is a stronger, uh, you know, you normally always just see them all about a normal. Maybe drill faster, I think, with a, with a low angle, slow <laughs> angle? Is it slow or low? It takes like, a, it looks like well, it takes a bigger slow. bite out of each turn. Yeah, but imagine if you were drilling through something that kind of like, you kind of mm -hmm. want to eat through it, you know what I mean? I would imagine that the high angle will probably, it's like a fine thread or a coarse thread, you know, it's like it'll go in faster or it'll go in slow. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm I, just trying to not example. So bad. I like that. Yeah, I, I know from machining, we or for like slow angle, it's very. It kind of goes with uh, slow angle. It, you're going to be drilling slower because you're going through thicker and stronger material. Yeah. Okay. Right? So. Thank you. I like that. Also, would it be sort of slow and be stronger than a car? Yeah, stronger. Like, like a car. Like a car. Like when you drive, you know, like in a tattoo. When you're in first gear, you go out of the exactly like that. Just made it 30 minutes. Okay. <laughs> crazy, crazy analogy. It's like a cat, right? So it's like, it's like, it's like an intersection where you go through the intersection, but you can't really get through the intersection, man. You just fly, you just fly through yes. the red light. I think um, Jack actually has something intelligent. Might it tie into the, to the, so on harder materials, your drill angle changes compared to softer materials. Maybe the, the helix angle will change as well. And it never really does it. It still has the same helix angle. <coughs> okay. I want to say I've, you see, well, like he had an example when, in machine work when you're uh, doing super hard stuff. I also wanted to say concrete, but I think concrete drills use a high angle. Yeah, yeah concrete. They have the yeah. Like, uh, masonry yeah. drills. Yeah. And they have like a really high. They do, yeah. Mm -hmm. But then masonry is actually very soft too. Mm -hmm. They also have a, a breaker at the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it's true. It, it widens out. Yeah, which is a whole other thing. So. All right. So you, I'm not going to get too hung up on that one. Uh, margin. <coughs> we talked about the margin. It's uh, really slow angle. You wrote low angle there. I'm just looking a little confused about it. It's uh, supposed to actually be slow okay, angle. We'll okay, all right. <laughs> just making sure. No, because I used high and low. So about and low back is over here, I used it's high. Oh, that does say it's slow. It's, slow. <laughs> it's, slow. I, it's still technically below, I guess. Yeah. Uh, margin. What's the margin? How would you describe the margin? It might just be. The cylindrical portion of the land which is not cut away. I would have just said part of the land that's not cut away. Yes. Um, Googled it real quick. <laughs> uh, don't need as the anymore. helix angle increases, <laughs> the length of engagement along the cutting edge decreases. Length of engagement. So yeah, it like slower drilling, pretty much. You're yeah. only going to be using that first few, oh, yeah, cut, few so first like inch or so to really cut anything. Yeah. Um, yeah you only using that anyway. <laughs> yeah, this is part to cut no matter what. The, the, the slower, the slower the angle, the slower the feed rate, and the rougher the finish. So, there you go. Just spin faster. All right. Like using yeah, different angles. Yeah. Whoa, dude. All of this you cannot change. You cannot change the land. You cannot change the margin. You cannot change the the helix angle. Correct. Mm -hmm. This part's called the what? The body. body. This is the... Okay. All right, so you can't change anything we've talked about so far. 
You're just going to get it through a bit. That's the way it is. I mean, you can try and heat it up, and you can try and untwist it, I guess, to straighten out the <laughs> angle if you want. Only if you do it by hand. Yeah, you're, you're not going to change, uh, what's this part of the middle? The web. The web, and you're not going to change the cutting edge. Cutting edge. Or chisel the edge. chisel edge, yeah. It's going to be what it's going to be, but you can change the drill, drill points. So we'll talk about the whole point up here. Whole point of the drill's point. Drill point. That angle that is formed by these two, this angle right here, and that angle right there is called the, nobody's got it yet. Cutting edge? Or the, oh, the, oh, yeah. Included angle. The included angle. Margin, cylindrical portion of the land that is not cut away by clearance. Um, and again, the reason why it's relieved right here and cut away is because... Friction. Uh, friction reduces friction. Chips. Uh, drill points has four main features. All right, <coughs> so we're talking about drill points now. We have the point angle, also called the... Included angle. angle. Yeah. All right, included angle. Let um, me get back to this. So, general purpose is going to be, according to this, 118. So, general purpose, uh, this is also 118. Um, these have some funny little points on them, some specialty drills. Um, this doesn't really go well with, I think, your book. We're going to change it a little bit, <coughs> but we can look down here to the bottom, and I like this down here. Okay, here we go. So soft and ductile material is 90 degrees. The thing you have to take away from that is I don't want you just to go 90 degrees. Well, it's 90 degrees like this. It's like 90 degrees, you know, to the drill bit, or is it 90 degrees this way? So 90 degrees, it's more pointy. So when you are drilling soft and duct, soft material, brass, bronze, plastics, it is going to be very... Pointy. pointy, and when you get into hard and high alloy steels, it will become very not pointy. Not pointy. Like uh, like dictators. Dictator? Have you ever watched that movie? Like not pointy. A missile. It, 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 it needs to be pointy to be scary. He manufacturing missiles, and he has a rounded top. And he goes to his missile guy who built it, and he goes, "It needs to be more pointy. It's, it will scare the people." <laughs> All right, general purpose. is according to that 118 degrees um, no that's correct Sorry. 118 degrees that is how much on each side 59. 59 degrees each side so that brings into this little gadget here I like these better so if you ever seen these that is four drill bits and it says right on there 59 degrees and you slide it up on here, and you'll see that that is, in fact, 59 degrees. And that side is 59 degrees. And that makes it a total of 118. Now, if you're a poor guy like me, and you happen to have two nuts, that is also exactly almost. It's supposed to be. It didn't work out this way. I saw it work earlier. <laughs> Does yeah, it does work. You just hold them right. So yes, it works. If you just hold them right, you don't just hold them right. Because it doesn't right. matter what so, the angle it is. General purpose one nineteen. Uh, high strength steel. What is high strength steel? One forty. Hardened. Hardened. Yeah, but what define the steel? High carbon contact. High carbon contact. The rusty stuff is more brittle. Yes, um, is and I wrote this is flatter. At 140 degrees, this allows more of the drill to make contact. <coughs> of course, I write that because it's what they say, but I have a bit of a problem with it because I think that if you have a you're drilling a hole, and you're using a very, ooh, forgot about that. <laughs> and you're using a very pointy drill bit, and 
and this is the drill inside, then the drill is also pointy, and it makes contact no matter what. So, follow me? It's probably better to start, I guess. Yeah, better to start. <laughs> More so more drill area for contact on starting then. Uh, let's see. So drills for softer material. Um, have more of a point. And that is 90 degrees. All right. So what's this angle right here? Included angle. Included angle, or the drill point angle will work for me. All right, then we have the cutting lips. Formed by the what? The flute made them, yeah. Well, that's just, that's the cutting edge. That does all the work. And this is not correct in almost any book. The relief angle. It is, I don't even know what they're talking about. But the relief angle is this angle right here. It does that. From the cutting edge backwards. And the reason why that's one of the most important angles is because it's sloped down, so when this is drilling, the cutting lip cuts into something, and then everything behind it is lower than that. If it were the other way around, then the first thing to hit would be the relief heel. Would be the heel, and it would burn a hole through. <laughs> and that's not what we're after, unless you're after that. So that is the relief angle going down. Let's see what I got. Relief angle. All right, so we covered that, 118. Um, cutting lips, see yeah, how we got that. Um, there we go. Um, see, I don't, what, it's like, what the hell are you trying to do? <coughs> I don't even that. But this angle makes sense to me. So a relief angle. So. The section of the land that is ground down, leaving the lip higher. Section. The section of the land that is ground down, leaving the lip higher. Follow, if the lip is not the tallest thing on it, when it's this way, then it's backwards. It's called an inverted relief angle. And instead of the lip being the very first thing that touches the material as it starts to drill, it's the back, which is called the yeah. heel, <laughs> the very first thing. And the heel is not a cutting thing. Heel. This has to be the highest thing. If this is the highest thing, then it just rubs a hole through. So this is higher, and this slopes downward. Uh, this kind of this this says almost no relief angle. So that's what I'm talking about. Here's the cutting lip, and that this has to be ground down that way, so that the heel is not the first thing to touch it. Very important. All right, uh, so we're gonna leave a little higher. Um, if there was no relief and the drill bit was just ground flat so that everything behind the drill bit, the heel, was the exact same height as the lip, then everything, it would at least cut, but it, the whole surface right here would then rub on the material. It would generate a lot of heat. Right? So if it's backwards, you're getting nothing. You're just gonna burn a hole through it from the heat from the heel. If it's flat, at least the lips will touch, but so will everything else at the same time. If everything else touches, then the drill bit won't get quite as hot, but it's still gonna overheat. So without relief. The entire land. Rub and overheat drill. 
and the work, which is more important. Um, that relief angle ranges from 8 to 24 degrees. So if a little is good, is a lot better. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. so talking a little bit more. <coughs> We're not talking about beer, so. I'd imagine that it would probably take a lot of strength away from the, if you had a higher angle. That is correct. Higher relief angle um, can cause the lips to break. Lips to break chip or break. So in other words, I take this angle and instead of being this 8 to 24 like it is right there, and I make it like that. So the lips are sticking way up and everything behind it's really cut back. Then everything behind the lip, there's not that much material behind the lip, and so they're prone to breaking and, and cracking off. Now of course if you leave it relatively flat, then there's a lot of material backing up the lips, but you overheat. So too high can cause the lips to break and too low causes or heating. Yep. Too low causes overheating. And an inverted angle just means heat. All heat, no cut. No cuts. All heat, no cut. <coughs> and the last bit of something to talk about here is the chisel edge, which we already talked about. And the chisel edge is the end of the what? The end of the web. End of the web. The end or exposed section of the web. And what happens is the drill bit gets shorter. It gets bigger, it gets wider. It gets bigger and wider. Right. All right. So that brings us to sharpening. This is a funny thing to talk about because uh, in my shop, when this is not a drill bit thing, but it goes right along with it. If you have a drill bit like this, they're <coughs> relatively expensive. I don't know how much this particular drill bit is, but it's very large. And if you needed it, your shop probably doesn't have like eight of them. And I don't know how you need this, but you did. Um, or any drill bit. If you have a replacement, you have a dull drill bit, and you have a replacement, throw it away and get a new one. If you have a number 30 or number 40 drill bit and you're trying to sharpen it in my shop, I'm going to get this one and whack you. Uh, you throw them away, right? And you don't waste your time on it. But if you have a drill bit that you absolutely need to sharpen because it's the only one you have and you got to get this thing done, it's a really awesome skill to actually have where you can walk up to a grinder and within a couple of seconds, a minute, sharpen a drill bit. But if you spend an hour, and a, like this project, when I took over, it was like, we had people, Phil was talking about how they, one teacher actually was like, fail people out program. You can't sharpen a drill bit, you don't pass. <laughs> um, but I would see people take a drill bit, and I kid you not, this long, not this fat, but this long, and not see them for like a day or so, and then they come at me a day later with something that had like uh, that long. I mean, there was uh, no clue left. It would be a half an inch, you go, is this okay? What happened to the, the drill bit was that long when I gave it to you? I know, but I just couldn't do it. I'm like, well, okay, that didn't help, all right? Because you took a nice size drill bit, you spent three days doing it. You would have been better off grabbing a chair and your phone, ordering it from Amazon, and just sitting out front and waiting for a new one to come, right? Because then you'd at least have a decent drill bit when it got there. So you don't want to waste your time sharpening a drill bit when you can just buy a new one. Um, also, uh, like even in the tour room, we have like multiple uh, drill doctor. Another one. Have you heard of drill doctors? I bought my father-in-law's, and because uh, he has a shop and you know his own stuff, and he, what the hell is this? 
And then like a year later, it's like, man, I used that thing for the first time. It's the most awesome thing ever. It's just a pencil sharpener for drill bits. <laughs> you, you know, you, you get the right size, right angle, you set it up, you put it in there, you just twist it, pull it out, and like, holy crap, it's brand new. Right? And he did all of his drill bits in you know, an hour. So, um, yeah. But I guess the story, the story I was going to tell. Um, I was, I probably already told it. But I don't have that many stories. But we we're, were gluing wood wings. We we're building wood wings for a steerman and doing some repairs on it. And so we had these little, you know, these uh, resource mold glue and, and acid brushes. And so we finished gluing up the section. I don't know, it was lunch or whatever. And I'm like, you know, I take my, my, my acid brush, and ding, I fling it in the garbage and go wash my hands. Dude's like, dude, what are you doing, man? He goes and he gets the acid brush out. He goes, you're just freaking wasteful. He goes, follow me. Right, and so we go, and he's like, this is how you do it. And he takes it, this cup, and he has got a coffee, special coffee cup, pours water in it, puts it in the microwave, we set it for three minutes, just and they're chastising me for being, you know, wasteful, and the, and the boss, who just bought the company, comes out, and he just, he's just standing there, kind of like this, just watching this, this whole thing go down. He goes, so you take, you wait, you know, two minutes to be good, you get your night water nice and hot, and you come over here, you know, you show me how to clean the brush and save it, he's like, I've been using the same brush for three weeks now. And then the boss goes, so let me get this straight. I've been watching you. It took you seven minutes to clean that brush. You've been doing this how many times a day? And he's like, well, like five times a day. So seven minutes, five times a day. And yeah, and he figured it all out. So I basically paid you like, you know, $150 to clean that two cent brush. Do me a favor and just start throwing away when you're done with it. So. <laughs> Anyway, so all right, uh, so sharpening. So let's say I got some videos. Um, now we'll watch videos. I didn't start recording today. I did.